What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we finished up Chapter 4 after supposedly finding Raymond. We're not sure if they're even the same Raymond, or really what happened between the appearance of Raymond and, well, the disappearance initially, the abduction, as we saw. And now, apparently there's something urgent going on in Reinhold Manor. So, that's what we're headed off to. However, of course, we, um... As is typical of gamers of my generation, not that I'm <laughs> that old, but growing up, I was always taught that if you go the unintended route, you'll oftentimes be recorded or rewarded with uh, some sort of treasure, or in this case, a puzzle. <clears throat> in the meantime, let's chat with whoever we run into. Stashin says, Hey, looks like you fellows are getting used to St. Mysterio, but stay sharp. Believe you me. <laughs> you'll be buried in all sorts of difficult puzzles before you can shout. Stash and Scarfin. That's really funny. Fitting for this uh, character. By now, I'm sure you've realized that you can retry the puzzles you fail to solve, eh? However, have you noticed how some puzzles just seem to vanish before you can get back to them? That's right. You see, that's the way it is and <laughs> with some things in life. Once they're gone, they're gone. For good. But rest at ease, you two. Those puzzles you thought had vanished have merely moved elsewhere. You must seek out Granny Riddleton's shack. It's a strange old building, so it should be easy enough to spot. But don't get sloppy just because you know how to retry puzzles now. There's no honor in laziness. Now that you've got the lowdown on puzzles in town, let me throw a puzzle your way to keep you sharp. Why, thank you, Stash and Scarfin. The Lazy Guard. Ah, fitting. Okay, the local museum has an exhibit that spans nine rooms, as shown in the diagram below. The entrance to the complex is marked by A, and the exit by B. The security guard on duty is a bit of a loafer and wants to walk each room of the exhibit while turning as few times as possible. What is the fewest number of turns he can make while still visiting every room? As an example, the diagram below shows a course that involves six turns. Gotcha. So the fewest number of turns, while obviously still going through each room, Well, I mean, I can come up with a way that's five. Are we able to draw? We can. Lovely. Okay, so um, the, the most tempting thing most people are going to think of is like, oh, I could just go like this, but then you end up exiting the wrong way, right? And that's not very helpful. So instead, we need to come up with something that will then end at that point. Um, and we obviously want to cover as much ground as possible when we can. Um, like cover as many un- or like previously unseen rooms, right? <clears throat> so at first glance, um, I'm thinking maybe something like this, but this already seems like it has too many turns, right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is comparable to the example. So it's definitely not going to be that. And that also rules out anything similar to that. For example, like the example they gave, um, it's just a rotated version, basically. Um, or is it rotated? Rotated and flipped, basically the same uh, structure. So we need to do even better than that. I'm thinking, just knowing Leighton, they're probably gonna want us to overlap at some point. I think that would be pretty interesting. For example, what if we went like this? This, 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 and then back that way. That would be one, two, three, four, five turns. So that would already be better. But can we get four? I wish there were a way I could kind of prove whether or not it's possible. And I think, okay, so it specifically says walking each room, not just seeing each room, which would be an opportunity for, you know, some, some word shenanigans. I think in order to do this most efficiently, we're going to need to take advantage of this first bit here. And then we'll need to turn. 
So if we need to turn, we come down here. And then we have our branching point of the decision, where we either turn or we go straight. I don't think turning is the solution here for the same reason I mentioned before. And we've actually already explored these options. I guess I was just trying to take advantage of the fact that you start the walk already facing one direction. So avoiding turning would be nice. But I'm not a hundred percent sure here. And getting an important phone call. So I guess I'll have to think about this more in a minute. Um, at the moment we're at five, but we'll be at four uh, soon enough. Hopefully. Phone call has been completed. It was, uh, it was very important, so my apologies for the interruption. Okay, and something else I was thinking. These doorways are pretty big, right? So when first looking at this, I think the assumption is that, oh, they will travel in the cent through the center of the room like so, and they will only turn when they get to the center of the room. However, I don't think that's actually necessary. While it's obviously shown as such when drawing, I don't think there's anything keeping you from saying, oh, they're starting here. What if they went in a straight line like this? To here, right? Something like that. And then what if they turned and went up like this? And then turned one more time and went like this. Right? I think that might actually be what they want you to do. And so if that's the case, you'd only actually need to turn twice. Assuming they don't count the initial, I guess, like turning in from A. It's not like you're, I don't know, moving in this way and then need to turn again, or moving this way and then need to turn again out. But I think that might actually be what they want, um, because they don't really restrict it in terms of like, oh, they have to be moving down the center, etc. That's just kind of what they show loosely. But is that absolutely necessary? So I'm going to try to, because I think they don't necessitate starting you know, um, entering from A, moving to the, like, east, like, you know, due east, and then leaving due west. It's just you have to go through that door um, first. And if you move in the direction shown, which I think is feasible, granted our officer is going to be moving in a straight line. My drawing isn't exactly a straight line, but I think it conveys the, the possibility quite well. And we've walked through every single room with this route. So I think this is going to be it. Let's try two and see how it goes. Luke, here's my answer. Oh, that's correct. Another Lovely. Puzzle solved. That was actually a really creative one. I like that one quite a bit. That's right. If the security guard takes a path like the one shown above, he can finish his patrol of all nine rooms in just two turns. Since the example shows the guard turning right angles to go from room to room, it's easy to assume that your solution works the same way, even though that's not the case. Yep, very true. Okay, <laughs> now that's what I like to see. Seems the training I've been giving you has paid off. Training that we've been given uh, by you. I don't know about that, buddy. No, no, no need to thank me. Anywho, me seeing you around. A desk. We'll give it to Luke for now. Again, we don't really have enough furniture to do anything meaningfully with that. Now, I did want to see... How are our gizmos doing? We're still missing a gizmo, but we haven't gotten one in a while. Which makes me think we missed a puzzle that actually is going to give rise to, well, the, the gizmo dog or whatever it may be. Although I'm almost confident it's a dog. And we're still missing about half or over half of the, uh, the puzzle pieces, so I think I'm still going to hold off on these. Not bother with them when we don't have a ton of information to work with. But okay, we just left the inn. Which way are we going to go now? I think we're going to head back. Look, we must head to the manor now. We mustn't keep Inspector Chelmy waiting. Okay, so the game is going to tell. Uh, the game is going to tell us that we absolutely need to go in that direction. So I guess 
We'll head this way, um, we'll chat with who's available and see, of course, if they have any puzzles for us, because this is Professor Layton. Hey, Professor, looking busy as usual, yep. Oh, I've got this puzzle I just can't figure out on my own here. Can you lend me your thinking cap? I love the... Oh, you're looking busy. Can you lend Can you lend your hand with this? Cut which one? Huh. Below are six linked rings. They may look like a tangled mess, but there is one ring that, if cut away, would leave the remaining five rings connected end-to-end -end in a long chain. Which one must you cut in order to make the chain? Choose one answer from below. Gotcha. So we want to choose basically the ring that has all of the rings, um, I guess, like going through its center. And it looks at first glance like it's B or E. Um, I mean, we could look at F, right? And F is really only around E. That's it. <laughs> and C is only around E and B. So that's not going to be it. E, on the other hand, is not going to get a due description because I have another phone call. <laughs> you would think when you're home alone for the first time in weeks <laughs> that uh, you'd have an easier time recording, but alas, here we are. All right, let's take a look at E. So E ring has F going around it, it has C bound to it, it has B not bound to it, notably. Notice B goes under it on both sides. And then D goes through it as well. Now let's take a look at B. So B has C going around it. B has E going around it. B has D going around it. And B has A going around it as well. Although notably, it's about one long string at the end, right? connected end to end in a long chain, meaning they wouldn't be, I guess, strung in multiple manners. So each ring should only be connected to two other rings, I think is the message I'm getting from this. So I think we're going to have to get rid of B, if I'm honest, but, um, or maybe E, ah, oh, it's between B or E, <laughs> darn it. So E is around D, um, B is around D, and A is around D as well. Let's see, what happens if you get rid of B or E? And then look at the, the connectivity, right? So C is connected to F. What else is C connected to? Our C is not connected to F, notably. Um, F is only connected to E. So F is going to be your end of one of the long string, whatever it is. So E needs to be connected to exactly two. And it's connected to F, and then what else? Both D and, and C, but not B. So we need to get rid of... Huh. So we can't get rid of E, and we can't get rid of F. Because if we get rid of E, then F is loose. And we can't get rid of F, because then, um, or do we get rid of F? And maybe it's just not as tangled up as I, I think it might be. So this is making it seem like we actually need to get rid of D or C. Yeah, let's look at C's connectivity. It's currently wrapped around B and E. That looks about right. So if we imagine this chain is going now F, then E, then C, then B, then B would be connected to what? A and D and E. <laughs> B is connected to so many. See, the thing is, Huh. Five rings connected end to end in a long chain. I get the impression that it's supposed to be like not a, a loop at the end. It's supposed to be one long string. I feel like A should be the end. But 
But if that's the case, then it wouldn't be one long string. <laughs> um, what happens if we get rid of B? Can I draw? No, I can't. Ah, oh, man, I wish I could draw. F is only connected to E. So if we kind of like pull F out of the loop, and then we like pull on E. E is going to take both C and D with it. That makes me think I have to get rid of either C or D. C is only connected to E and B. And then B is connected to C. It's not connected to E. But it is connected to D and A. So I think we need to get rid of D. If you get rid of D, F is connected to E. E is connected to F and C. And then C is connected to E and then B. And then B is connected to A. And I think that would be your five long string where there are two at the end that are only connected to one ring. And then there are the three in the middle that are only connected to two. So I think we actually need to get rid of D here. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. So let's, let's give it a go. And hope for the best, right? There we go. <laughs> All right, we got it correct. Another puzzle solved. Yep. That was uh, that was surprisingly difficult for me to get my to wrap my head around. Um, I mean, the main thing was determining. Okay, so if you have this end result, what does the connectivity need to be? Each thing needs to be you know connected to two, right? Um, and that's what put us at the dichotomy of C versus E. Which is, you know, contrasted with, originally I thought it was going to be B or D, just because of how they looked. But um, then, of course, examining what if each of them were gone, right? Anyways, ah, oh, so that's how you do it, yeah? I can finally rest at night. This thing was bugging me for days. Let me tell you something neat. And by neat, I mean really ter- or I really mean terrifying. The thing is that I've actually seen that old man with the big sack coming out of that tower up north. I bet you dollars to donuts that he's the one behind all these disappearances. I wonder what he does up there. Wait, no. I don't even want to think about it. It's just too scary. Interesting. We'll give the books to Layton. Okay. And then let's see if you have a puzzle for us, because of course you do. <laughs> this is Professor Layton. Still no luck finding the villain? What an odd world we live in. Well, you know what they say, truth is stranger than fiction. Speaking of fiction, I just thought of this little gem. Please give me your honest feedback on it. Ooh, based on fiction? Huh. How many sheets? A 40 picarat puzzle. Ooh, I'm excited. Several rectangular sheets of transparent film are arranged on top of each other as shown. The lines represent areas where one sheet overlaps with another. At the thickest point of this pile, how many sheets are overlapping? Ooh, okay, so we can at least draw. So we have one sheet here. This is pretty tough. Um, and I think we have two more sheets here. This is tough. They're all completely transparent, right? So... So what I'm tempted to say is just, oh, we have, you know, one sheet and then we have a second sheet here. And you just kind of draw the different rectangles, right? Is that really all there is to it? I feel like that can't be. Why is that? No, that's not what I wanted to happen. Uh, okay, so that would be like the third one. And then we have the fourth one. And then we have the fifth one. And then we'd have the sixth one. And then the seventh one. So there are seven sheets of film. Obviously, that's not the question, though. It's at the thickest point of the pile how many sheets are overlapping. So there are seven, right? I think we can safely say that. There's seven. 
So now we clear it and we say, what is the thickest point of the pile? Well, if we have one of them here, right? It's not overlapping with any of the stuff over here. Which means it's not going to be seven at the thickest point because, um, well, there are plenty that are over here on this side that don't even have a chance of overlapping with stuff on the right side. So definitely not seven, probably not six either. What is the point of the most overlap? We have two here, three, four, Maybe I should have just redrawn. Eh, it's kind of tough to do that cleanly. I'd imagine it'll be somewhere in this center area. <clears throat> I should actually draw the rectangles again. We have this one. And I think the key to drawing the rectangles accurately is starting from an edge that's outside the pile mess, and use that as your guide for drawing them. I also realized that was a pretty poorly drawn rectangle there. <laughs> so there we have our individual sheets, um, and we have seven of them, I believe. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And so this one is on the outside, and that's probably not going to be included in whatever the, the thickest point is. I guess what we can do is we can go sheet by sheet and see where is the most overlap for this particular sheet. So we look at this one in the lower right that I have an arrow drawn to, and we say, on this sheet, where is it most overlapped with other ones? It's in that top left corner, right? And at that top left corner, how many is it overlapping with? It's overlapping with this one. It is overlapping with this one as well. It's overlapping with this one. And I think that's it. So there would be a thickness of one, two, three, four. And again, this one on the right side is not, this one is not, and this one is not. And because we know there are seven, that makes sense. So it's at least four. It's at least four and it's not seven, right? So let's see if any of the other sheets have higher degrees of thickness. Let's look at this second one here that I'm going to draw a star by. I don't want to have to clear the, uh, the drawings I've already done. So this one here, at its thickest point, where is that going to be? Um, we've already looked at certain areas, and this highlighted corner right here has a thickness of four. So let's look at other places, because everything that's already covered in the first sheet we analyzed is not going to be bigger than that four. So we need to, we need to look at the other areas of sheet two. So let's look at that upper left corner, because it's not going to be this region here. Um, it's not going to be this one here either, because that's only going to be uh, two. And then this dashed region I'm drawing right now is going to be three. This one here um, that I'm now filling in, in the top left corner of sheet number two, what do we have here? We have sheet number two, we have sheet number three, we have sheet number four. Do we have anything from the left side also? We do. We also have this sheet that in the top left corner. So we'll put check mark there instead of the X. <laughs> um, so we also have that. Do we have any of the others though? We don't have the other two. They don't overlap and we don't have the original one in that region as well. So that's also four. So now we've gone through the second sheet. Let's take a look at the third sheet. We've already analyzed the regions that we've dashed or filled in solidly. And we know that those regions are four. If we start in the top right corner of this sheet, we're only gonna have one. We keep going to the left and we're gonna have an overlap of two. And then we have this sort of T shape here. I'll, I'll dash that now. That's only gonna be three. Now let's take a look 
at what we have here, this kind of like L shape. Wow, this is so tough to describe. <laughs> um, this sort of Tetris L shape. Notably, we're missing out on the lower left, the far left um, sheet there, and we're missing out on the bottom right sheet, and we're missing out on the, the second sheet from the right as well, so that can't be more than four as well. Let's take a look at some of these further left regions. So I'm going to fill in a region right now. Let's take a look here. We don't have the first or second sheets, but we do have the third. We do have the fourth. We do have the fifth. We have the sixth, and we have the seventh. So that's going to be five. That's five sheets. The question is going to be, is there any place that's going to have six? And the answer is no, because I'm going to clear things now. This sheet and this sheet, these two here on the left, will never overlap with these two sheets on the right. So at most, we can get five. So because we found one region where that, where that is the case, um, this region right here, we'll go with that because it contains one, two, three that are overlapped in this kind of central area, and then two from the left. That also makes me think that, yeah, this region here too actually should have been five. No, that would still be four. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so it's five. That was surprisingly complex. I mean, it's 40 Picarats, but the, the thought process great. felt very elaborate. I also assumed I got it right before that confirmation, so as Leighton, as Leighton was approaching the screen, I was like, oh wait, I hope I didn't get it wrong, I hope I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> um, but okay, we, we got it, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. This puzzle seems straightforward, but it's quite formidable when you get right down to it. Yeah, I, I agree. Beautiful work. But I think the puzzles I write into my next novel will be even harder than that one. What puzzles are you writing into your novel? If you have time, stop by later. I'm sure to have an utterly fascinating puzzle prepared for you by then. Oh, interesting. Oh, we got a gizmo! We got a gizmo! I want to see what we can do with this gizmo. Oh, we're so close! We have one more ear! <laughs> one more! Alright, we'll, we'll close then and see where else can we go. This is Granny Riddleton's, is it not? It is. We don't have any puzzles! None of them. Interesting. Why, howdy! Do you often find yourself hopelessly, achingly, painfully stuck on puzzles? Well then, Sonny, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Granny Riddleton's Puzzle Shack. <laughs> if the cottage is empty, it means that you've solved all the puzzles that are currently available. On the other hand, if you leave too many puzzles unsolved, they might not all fit in the cottage. If that's the case, you can see the rest of your lost puzzles by tapping on my little broom over there. Now go on, see what you have waiting inside the cottage. Wow, so we really have done all the puzzles that we could have found up until this point. I thought I had missed out on quite a bit from the uh, the previous chapter towards the end because we didn't visit Granny Riddleton when we could have, but I guess not. Um, let's see, is the game going to let us go to the left? Ah, uh, of course not. I didn't think so, but I had to try, right? The town hall is not open, apparently. <laughs> okay. Although it's 10 o'clock, right? There's a clock right there on screen. Anyways, um, they're not going to let us go through that wooden door, are they? No, they're not. Okay. Anything in the barrels? The clock? No. Okay. Then to the right we will go. We have... What is what is this on the ground? What's that on the ground? It looks like a scrap of notepaper. What's it say, Luke? Need some reading glasses, Layton? <laughs> looks a little blurry on the left. <laughs> well, let's see here. Ahem. It's just terrible. Lady Violet has an awful case of the flu and hasn't left her bed for days. I'm no doctor, so I can't think of any way to help her. Oh, what to do, what to do. Lady Violet? Oh, this journal must be talking about Baron Reinhold's first wife. My heart is heavy as I write these words. The loss of his wife has completely crushed the boss. If only there was something I could do to help. 
He walks around looking like he's had the wind knocked out of him. Oh! Oh! I see. That's something with the tower! That's something with the tower! What we saw happen to Raymond. Raymond was abducted and then we got like a, a new Raymond per se. In the same way I'm sure there's somebody took the original Lady Violet and then produced Lady Dahlia. <laughs> and that's the end. Gosh, whoever wrote this must have cared an awful lot for the Baron and his family. Hmm. Very, very interesting. That has me very curious. Ooh, I'm excited for where this story's gonna go. I wanna see how it's done, right? How long has this been going on? Um, any of these doors open? Any new puzzles laying around here? It seems so. Those candies look absolutely scrumptious, don't they? Luke, those candies just gave me a splendid idea for a puzzle. Have a listen to this. I knew it. So yeah, again, we are rechecking numerous places we've already been to. Um, because they do freshen up with some puzzles in between. Or, you know, with new chapters. You have ten jars filled with 50 pieces of candy each. You then pour the candy into small bags and attempt to get half a jar in each bag. Now you have 20 bags of candy. What is the percentage likelihood that there are an average of 25 pieces of candy in a single sack. Wow, all right, let's think about this. Allow me to get my uh, pen and paper. <laughs> um, so we're starting off 10 jars filled with 50 pieces of candy each. So we have 10 of them, and each of them has 50, and this pen doesn't work, lovely. All right, this pen, we have 10 jars, 50 each, which of course gives us 500 candies in total. You then pour the candy into small bags and attempt to get half a jar in each bag. Now you have 20 bags of candy. So you attempt, but they're not guaranteed to have half um, a jar in each bag. So if you have 20 bags, how does that divide, right, the 500? Well, that should be 25 on average, right? Right? That is 500 divided by 20? Yeah. Now you have 20 bags of candy. What is the percentage of likelihood that there are an average of 25 pieces of candy in a single sack? Okay, yeah, so that's going to be 100% then. <laughs> um, because again, you took 500 bags, or 500 pieces of candy, and you put them across 20 bags, so naturally the average is going to be 25, regardless of how far off each individual bag may be. Yeah, so I think it's going to be 100 here. And I cannot foresee um, any way to actually calculate anything more complicated than that. <laughs> um, yeah, so long as you take the, the, the correct number of pieces and put them in the correct number of bags such that the average would be 25, then the average will be 25 no matter what each individual value is. So, yeah, we're gonna go with 100%. Unless there's something I'm really missing that's obvious, but all right. I did it, yes! <laughs> yes! We did it, guys! Very good. You had 50 pieces of candy, 500. Yep, the average will always be 25. There we are. Once you discern what the question is saying, the problem is a rather simple one, isn't it? Oh, and that should be the final gizmo. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's let's do that. We finally have the ear, and... Yay! Our gizmo pupper is ready. There we are. The little robot dog is finally assembled. Now we just have to name the rascal. I have a feeling he'll come in quite handy. <laughs> By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses, and you should have a new challenge from me. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. <laughs> I love that. Layton's challenges, the inventor's house has been added to your map. Please enter your dog's name. Aw, okay, so we get to we get to name our Robo Dog. 
And I'm curious what these Layton's challenges are. I'll, I mean, I guess at the beginning of the next episode, uh, we'll have to check out what those are. In the meantime, let's let's name our pupper. I am going to name our pupper. We'll go lowercase now. I didn't even realize that that was the case. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna want me to do the the eye really quickly, aren't they? Why is it not? All right. <laughs> We're just gonna go all caps then. Oh, interesting. I um obviously am not having an easy time with how <laughs> this game registers uh, certain letters. But nevertheless, we have successfully named our dog Bailey. Um, Bailey is my dog who unfortunately passed away a few months ago, um, but will forever live on in my heart and who is one of my best friends ever and, and will be the lovely name of our lovely robo-dog. Okay. Oh, now look at the icon for gizmos. It's it's really cute now too. So, okay. Um, with that, I think we'll say we'll continue exploring, finding new puzzles. Maybe even check out uh, the Layton's challenges section from the main menu in the next episode. And I guess we'll see if anything else is on the bonuses screen. And we may get to. We may eventually make our way to Reinhold Manor to see what's so urgent. I know those of you that are really invested in the story. Maybe a little disappointed that we didn't even get that far in this episode, but hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless, and are looking forward to the next episode. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>